You can bear it for a few minutes. Over here, over here. Come closer, Paul. I can to smell you. Six feet, please. Yes, yes. Stay away from me. As far as you are from each other, that's good. No, we're protesting. That's right. Oh, that's right. We're protesting. So, um, we're super excited to see all you guys' faces. I've, I've uh, said hello to a lot of you that have been here, and I know your faces. I've also got to meet uh, at least six or seven, maybe even more new members or members that are looking to become members. Um, so we're excited to have you here at Corona, and uh, this is kind of a cool thing. We've never done the bonfires before, but we're really excited. So anyway, in short, we're really happy you guys all came. It's good to see you guys. It's good to see the interest in spearfishing as a whole here in Southern California, and we're glad to be a part of that. Um, I've, I have talked to a few members, so I'm going to do a little bit of new member orientation kind of speak right now. Woo. If you guys have just become a member over the last, usually it's a month, but right now it's six months. If you've uh, become a member over the last six months, you probably haven't been to a public meeting where we all get together and we all talk like this. But um, this is generally what we do pre-COVID and certainly after COVID. We're gonna try to start finding um, places that are open and allowed to congregate like, like this state beach. So this is cool that we're here. Um, probably next month, we're gonna find another venue that's gonna be an open air environment um, that we can all get together and we can all talk and learn from each other. Uh, which is really the goal of the OC Sparrows. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. If some of you new people don't know, um, our goal is to uh, provide uh, knowledge based not only to our donating members but to the public at large about spearfishing, uh, primarily spearfishing safety, but also gear, spots, and the camaraderie that comes around with. Um, meeting and knowing your fellow neighbors here in SoCal that are also interested in the same things you are. You know, spearfishing is a great sport to be able to get out and enjoy um, the Southern California coast, which if some of you grew up here, you may not know, but this is a world-class spearfishing destination. People come from all over the country to dive our kelp forests here that we have grown up and been accustomed to. And so many people around here take this area for granted but we are really in a prime spearfishing location globally you're not going to find the number of species and the size of the fish and the quantity of the fish as you're going to find here in SoCal almost anywhere in the country of course there's some places that are going to beat us out but um, we're so lucky to live here in Southern California and as the OC Sparrows and an OC Sparrows member we're so anxious to share that knowledge with all of you and the public primarily so that the people that are interested in this sport uh, they're gonna go out and you guys are gonna dive and you're gonna dive regardless of whether you're in a club or you're not right we want to be that hinge point for you guys so that those new divers can come in and you can dive safely, you can find a group of other like-minded individuals that like to do the same thing that you guys do, which is go out, enjoy these kelp forests, enjoy the waters of Southern California and beyond, and really do it in a safe and productive manner. So as a member of the OC Spiros, one of the cool things that you're gonna find is you're gonna find a big network of individuals that, um, that, that share this passion, that share the passion of getting out and diving in the water and seeing the ecosystem, being a part of it, and really enjoying that, not only individually, but more importantly, with friends and other fellows that are interested in it. So one of the big benefits that you get as being an OC Spiros member is being able to meet, find fellows, and, and uh, what do you call them? Ladies. <laughs> that are in this also, right? And there is some... <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> totally butchered that one. <laughs> we love you women, okay? <laughs> so, um, this is a cool spot and a cool get together. If you guys are on the fence on whether you want to be an OC Spiros member, some of you maybe not even know how, you just go online, ocspiros.org, find our membership, uh, on the header there's a there's a form you can fill out to become an OC Spiros member it's literally that simple we are the most non-judgmental 
and largest spearfishing group in the country, bar none. That's a fact, right? We have the most members. We're right teetering on 200 members at this at this point. A lot of them you'll see here. A lot of them you're going to see over the years at different things. As an OC Spears member, you get um, uh, well after COVID and stuff. We have camping trips that we do on a yearly basis. We'll have multiple camping trips. And those are only for members. Uh, if you guys haven't been on one yet, we're really sorry. We had a Mexico trip scheduled. Some of you guys are signed up. Some of you guys aren't. Brad, we might have a few extra spots available for that. It's all going to be based on you. Yeah, we're going to schedule that. We've got a lot of cool things happening. If you're not a part of our Facebook OC Spiros and Friends page, I really encourage you to get on Facebook. I know there's a lot of stuff about social media right now and um, them making a, a mint off of you. And that's just a fact. But uh, right now, our OC Spears and Friend page is a great spot to collaborate. It's a great spot to meet divers. It's a great spot to meet other club members and members of other of other clubs up and down the coast. Santa Barbara Freedivers, Long Beach Neptunes, the uh, LA Fathomers, uh, the San Diego Freedivers down south. And the, I'm not even going to mention them. <laughs> and there's other clubs too. Uh, the OC Spiros, I think, is the most welcoming club that you're going to find in Southern California. We have divers of every caliber from people who have literally never been wet to divers who have been diving for 20 plus years and have the knowledge base that you guys who are new are really seeking. And so uh, monthly meetings and stuff like that, if you guys are trying to get in this dive, dive community and you're trying to get your footing trying to figure out your gear, you're trying to figure out spots, you're trying to find dive buddies. You found the right spot here in OC Spirits. All right. Um, so we're going to be working over the next year, of course, dealing with the COVID stuff, we're trying to find um, new venues so that we can meet like this, like in open air settings, so we can be as safe as possible while still having that community and that camaraderie that we're all seeking to find dive buddies. And so we're really happy to be able to provide that for you. We're, um, we will continue to provide that for you moving forward. Um, this meeting right now is really a meet and greet. And so we're excited. I've already met probably uh, 10 people here tonight. And that's really fun for me because I like to meet new people. Uh, you're going to get the best out of the club if you are that type of person who likes to meet me new people. If you're... Uh, if you are not shy or if you are shy and you can overcome that and you can put yourself out there and introduce yourself to people, that's where you're going to get the most out of this club. Uh, everybody here is looking to both learn from people and share their knowledge with people. Uh, that's the whole point of a club uh, to begin with so that we can, as a collective, share our information to others so that we can all learn from each other on a uh, on a monthly basis. So, who's the new, who's the first time ever been to an OC Spears event? Raise your hand. Wow. Holy speech. Sh speech. All right, we're gonna, we're speech. gonna go across. Some of you guys probably know each other from Facebook, but I'm just gonna ask. Just go around and introduce yourself. I'll go from here, starting with you. Hi, I'm Joy. And where do you live? And I live in PV, and I've been really excited to. Be Met OC Spiros because basically everybody that I've known spearfishing has come from this group. So thank you all. I know a lot of you from just thank you for saying yes to when I said, hey, and will somebody dive with me? Yes. <laughs> cool. already famous. <laughs> How deep can you dive? Andrew, nice to meet you. Born and raised in LA. Same. Really appreciate all the stuff you guys have been putting out. Everyone's so friendly. I laugh on the threads all the time. Everyone's super cool. And uh, 30 feet, got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. But uh, start learn how to swim just about a month and a half ago. So no shit. Just getting into the shit. Yeah. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah. Change your life. Joy helped me a ton. She's a great up. teacher. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Who's next on this side? I'm John. No, step forward, John. In the, In the light. light. See you. <laughs> I'm John. I literally just joined while you were talking. So. Nice. <laughs> newest. Newest member. Yay. Uh, so I've been uh, 
scuba instructor for over 10 years, uh, but I've also been free diving all during that time. So not new to the water, but new to spearfishing. Oh, cool. Well, welcome. Glad you're here. Yeah. Who's the next one? Go ahead. I'm Jojo. Uh, kind of new to the area. I've been here about five years and just getting back in the water. So thanks for having me. Cool. Nice. Been nice. cool. Welcome, man. Anyone else? Anyone this way? Hi, everyone. Come uh, forward so we can see your face. Hey, I'm, I'm Steve. Uh, I'm new to this too. Uh, I started snorkeling last year, last November, of my first wetsuit. And uh, this year I started to do some spear fishing and uh, really want to learn the sports and uh, so happy to be here, find so many wonderful people here and uh, I can dive around uh, 30, 40 feet. Congratulations, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Steven and um, my first spirit fish in uh, Maui. So ever since then I've been really like trying to learn it, um, been in the water for about a year and a half just snorkeling around but I feel like this is the season for me and I'm ready. So yeah, and I live, uh, in my van, which is kind of cool. So if I'm near, near the shore, just call me and I'll come down. Awesome. <laughs> Are you on our nice. group page? I am. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anyone else going this way? Go ahead, Rick. Uh, I've never been to one of these before, or I don't even not even on Facebook, but uh, hope to get on there tonight. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've been a uh, waterman for a long time, but not very good spear fisherman, so I want to learn a little bit more. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Ian, um, based in Long Beach. I grew up fishing and being in the water, but rod and reel, so got interested in spear fishing. I took a um, free diving class with Eric uh, in July and uh, joined the club, so first time here, excited to right on. get up there. Welcome, Hi. we're so glad to have you. I'm Cole, I'm from uh, Long Beach. Uh, I've been diving in a part of the OC Spear Hills Facebook for like a year now, Cool. and uh, I'm just happy to be here. Glad, glad. Anyone else? Yeah, you're a new man. It's Michael Rills. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, so I've been diving for like a year actively, like um, uh, a year, year and a half, and I just got in it because I thought it was like a badass sport, you know, get your own food and who got in. I actually met this guy at, in class and it just kind of came together. I'm like, hey, you spiritual? Like, let's get together. And then he was stalking my Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was all history after that. Why wouldn't he, bro? <laughs> Come on. So yeah, I've been Did hitting some shirt? spots with, this, with uh, a lot of these guys, and uh, I'm excited. You know, trying to learn from the people that have been doing it for longer. And right on. We're happy to have you. To, thanks. Happy to have you. Anyone else going this way? Go ahead, man. Come, come over here. Nick, alcoholic. <laughs> up, Join the club. Man? Wait. Join the club. Oh, wrong class. <laughs> I'm just looking for everyone's lobster lobster spots. So. Cool. <laughs> we are all. We, we are all. If, all if you got any uh, hidden spots, just uh, shoot them my way. Sweet. Yeah, for sure. Anybody over coming? Right there, man. This way. Right this there. way. This way. New. New. Come over here. Come in the light. Weston uh, just moved to Elisa Vieja like a month ago. Been diving on and off for four years, sporadically for four years. Okay. Um, probably mostly on like vacations in Maui. Stay um, off my spots. <laughs> <laughs> the warm water stuff. Um, so, and I got really basic gear, but I just want to learn more and get in the water. And uh, Good. Well, if you have sweet. gear questions and stuff like that, if anybody has gear questions, um, our board members over here, we got Eric, Brad, and Fernando, and myself, and uh, there's a ton of other people here that are pretty much expert level in gear, so if you guys got any gear questions, seek one of these guys out, and uh, they can answer your questions. It's going this way, anyone else? New? Come, come in a little, come in, come in. James Fazio uh, moved to Southern California two weeks ago from Arizona. Whoa. This has been on my bucket list, so I'm a virgin in all aspects of uh, spearfishing. More than uh, uh, <laughs> we need. He's married, guys. He's married. Hey, twins. Uh, twins. So I have just endless questions. So I'll be asking. Cool, cool. Anyone else? No strangers in the back there. Don't be shy. No? No? Okay. You're not. You're not. You are. 
No, no, no. It's no. <laughs> okay. I'm more of a You. Hi. Hi, my name is Watako. Um, I'm alcoholic too. <laughs> I started spearfishing last month because I'm eating, I like eating sushi. Yes. Sushi. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good reason. Yeah, I'm going to Eric's class this week. Congratulations. Looking forward. You know, very, very smart thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, so glad that you're here. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, cool. Dude, that's a lot of new people. We're so stoked to have all of you new guys here, and we hope that you get as excited about the club as we are. Um, if you guys have any questions, of course, you can email us at info at Um one, Another really good way is to just find us on Facebook, instant message us or just send out a question to the group and it'll get answered in more ways than you actually probably want. <laughs> um, but it'll be an informative into the SoCal Spear culture. So you get mad at Paul Romanowski, he's right there behind Yeah, there, where's Paul? Well, here, yeah. Paul, where are you? Come here. Paul? Why did you do that? Guys, I'm, I'm not going to have him talk, don't worry. <laughs> This is Paul. Paul's not a member, but he's kind of a member. If his if his group wouldn't be so mad, you would be a member of the OC Spears. You're basically a pseudo member, but yeah. Paul comes to our meetings a lot and he talks because that's what he does. And uh, he's got a knowledge base that's really big. Yeah, every once in a while he shoots fish. But uh, if you guys have any other questions, if you guys have questions and you're ready for a conversation, you can ask Paul about it either in person or on Facebook. Cause he will answer it and then some. So, uh, Paul Romanowski, remember that? You got questions for the PCCs, probably be a good night to hit me. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're not gonna talk about the PCCs. Why not? Okay. Fucking two minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, two a, minutes it's on a, the PCC. It's a, it's, a, it's, a it's, a team, it's a team effort as well as individuals. Pacific Coast Championships a, is what he's talking about. It's a high fish count. It's hunting rockfish <laughs> up in San Cal, up Woo, in uh, San okay. Simeon. It's pretty fun and you will learn a lot if you go up there. Even if you haven't dove competition really, and you got a couple of buddies, go up. What you learn doing it, you carry through everything else you do and you'll get a lot of gear information. The guys up there are very, very open about their tactics, about their gear and stuff. And you see what guys who do it and do it a lot use. You'll find out why they do what they do. It'll help you advance really quickly compared to running out here and diving by yourself where it takes you years to figure out some things that we can show you in a minute flat. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, so before we, I'm going to have Brad come up here. We have a new thing, uh, which is the uh, Ryan Huff Scholarship Fund to, in an effort to get um, people uh, certified in FII, which is the Free Dive Instructors International, or an alternative course, PFI, but FII, in our opinion, is the best course. Um, Brad, yeah. Brad's going to talk about that. He's going to share that little bit of information. If you guys have any other questions that I didn't cover, and you want to know some more details, come and talk to us. Uh, we'll be around until 10. So. Hi, uh, I'm Brad. I'm also one of the directors of the club. Um, going to introduce tonight, uh, I'm sure if you follow the OC Spiros and Friends um, Facebook page, you've seen us talk about the scholarship fund. Um, it's in memorial of Ryan Hopp uh, that we lost on um, Lobster Opener last year. Um, and it's to remove the financial barrier from anyone who might see it as a barrier in getting free dive certified. Um, it's a need-based scholarship. Um, one in which we will pay for any of your free dive certifications. So it's for level one primarily, like we want to make sure we can, we can certify as many level ones as possible, but it's also open for um, extended learning. So if you want to do your level two, your level three, advanced free dive safety, waterman survival, uh, spear fishing, any of those courses you can apply for it as well. It's only open to OC Spiros members, and there is a difference between being an OC Spiros and Friends Facebook follower and being a OC Spiro member. So if anybody doesn't understand that, um, that the scholarship is open to paid members, and the reason that we have to do it that way is because donate, donate members, donate. Well, I was going to get there. The, the reason that we have to do it that way is as we're a 501c3, 
we survive on donations. So the, the only way that we can put together events, that we can put together camping trips, and we can have a scholarship is through donations. So, um, so your membership uh, donations go to support that as well as many of our sponsors, one of which, you know, being the instructors themselves. Um, our local instructors have donated a significant amount of classes. Uh, Eric, for, for instance, has donated a full class, which is eight students. Ryan Keane, who is another member, has donated a full class, which is another eight students. Um, Jeremy Calkins, who's uh, another director of the club, also a local uh, FI instructor, has donated a full class of eight students. We have uh, one more group of four seats in Long Beach and another group of four seats in San Diego that we're working on for a total of 32 seats available right now that we want to pay for for you guys to get certified. Um, so all you have to do is you go to the web, our website, ocspiros.org. At the top, you'll see a button for scholarship, and there's a form that you fill out there. Rest assured that, that everything that's in the form, because there are questions about your financial situation, will only be reviewed by the scholarship board, and they will be that information will be kept confidential. We're not sharing it with anyone outside of the review board. Um, once we get through that and we choose um, from the written application, we're going to have a uh, videoed, like a Zoom interview, which will be recorded and um, for purposes of being able to share with the world who it is, our OC Spiros, who, who we're supporting with their scholarship funds and, and to, uh, to really promote what we're doing here because it's something that has not been done by any other club anywhere else um, in the world. Um, so you guys have a really good opportunity in uh, being a member and having access to that. If you can afford it, um, because the instructors are so graciously donating so much of it, we want to make sure that they're being supported also financially because you know, they, the money is, is, is necessary for them and their families. If you can't afford it, please apply for the scholarship fund so you can still get certified and we can help you do that. Brad, can you tell us who Ryan Huff was? Ryan Huff was a club member of ours. Um, he was a um, he was a certified diver. So, th so, uh, and this is somewhere you know in a conversation that I'm sure you'll see Paul and I have multiple times throughout the year. Paul Romanowski he was up here earlier. Um, but getting certified is not going to guarantee that you're not going to have an accident. Um, so we should put that out there right away. Ryan did have an accident, it was September 29th of last year. Um, there's a YouTube video that we put on the OC Spiros channel that goes into depth about what happened, what we surmised from, from all the different uh, data points that we could find from his watch, from uh, his dive partners, from people, you know, uh, witnesses on the beach that saw what happened. Uh, we sort of pieced together things that happened, so I encourage you to go and watch that. Um, Jeremy Hawkins did a, a rundown on that. Um, but Ryan is a, uh, is a father, um, he's a husband, um, he was a, an amazing diver and um, several different factors came together all at once that led to him dying. And that's important to all of us because it wasn't just, you know, devastating that he himself died. Diane, his, uh, his wife, she's on the scholarship board. We left her behind. Um, three kids, right? There's, there's three little kids. Uh, left three little kids behind. So it's a really important for us. The, the reason why, for me, it's so personally important that all of you guys get certified and all of you guys educate yourself and on every single dive. I don't mean every single time you get in the water. Every single time you break the surface, that you remember that it's not just you that you're taking. That, that you're taking not necessarily a risk, a calculated risk. That, that it, it's your, not just your life that's in your hands. There's an entire network of people around you that either rely on you or love you or need you to be in their lives. So I need you guys, and I really want you to, to take safety as your primary concern. That big fish, you'll see it again sometime. The fish of a lifetime is not a thing. That big lobster, you'll find him again. Make sure you're safe first. Make sure you can uh, come back to the meetings because we want your $50 donation for being a <laughs> um, Is there any questions at all about the scholarship fund, about membership, about the difference between a Facebook member and an actual member, anything like that? Okay, great, apply.
Be a member. Let's do a raffle. Thanks, guys. Last of 844. 844. Some of this. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, I trust you. All right. Last of eight. No, no, no. Eight three five. Eight three five. Eight three five. Where's eight three five? Eight three five. There you go. Come on up, get your hat. Boom, new member right there. Ah. I see the salty crew. What size is the shirt? We've got a medium and a medium. So two medium shirts. So these are flexing shirts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you look like a chorizo. No matter what. Eight four seven. Eight four seven. Here it is. You want a blue one or a white one? You know the the whole reading the last three numbers. Eight three three. Yeah. Come on, blue so shirt. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so fit them, fit, man. Nice. I yeah. like it. All right, next up is a shark band. This is a watch that uses magnetic abilities to keep sharks away. I personally tested this in Maui on the black tips and other reef sharks, and it worked awesome. Don't think it will work against a great white out here, but if you go to Hawaii a lot, that's an awesome uh, band to have. Let's see here. 831. Is that a Maui diver? Oh, there you go. Did you just call it? All right. Now we have a California watch company donate. Awesome stainless steel $300 watch here. Whoever gets it's awesome. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't get a ticket. <laughs> you don't get one. Ah. All right. This isn't even a paid position. <laughs> All right. 848. 848. Oh, man. Right there. We got it. Nobody eight, has to take it. It's mine. Is that you? Let's eight, see. Let's see. Hold on. Who's he get? 847? Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Awesome, guys. But that one won't scare sharks away. Not so that one won't scare sharks away. Uh, it's not used to regular life, but still, <laughs> but I gotta get, I gotta replace mine. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming out, everybody. Feel free to hang around, talk to everybody. I think we have till ten here before they kick yes, us out. Yes. Since we're all here in a circle, does anybody have any questions? This is not a place to be shy about questions about you know lobstering, diving, spearing. Like, ask any questions. You've got a lot of people around here with a lot of information. Uh, right. so I got a safety tip for you guys that we just thought up the other, the other week while diving. Uh, a lot of people are communicating because you're not using VHF radio. If you're on the beach or something, you're going to go back. If something happens, no matter what it is, your car won't start, whatever, you're going to be doing it off your cell phone. If something happens to you, you might consider making sure that your partner knows your cell phone password or remove the password off your phone till your trip is done because even if I tell Eric what my password is, when the fit hits the shan and he's stressed out beyond belief trying to get me back because I'm sick, save my life, whatever that thing is, can't get into my phone. He's just as stranded as, you know, as he would be with no phone at all. And he raised my history. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it is just something that we thought about and it's like, you know, you have five guys on the boat, five different phones, and if you needed to make that call, if your radio's not working or whatever, and that's what brought it up. We had a radio that the antenna was out, and we eventually got the antenna working, no problem. But I mean, in that case, they're going, oh, use a cell phone, and it's like, you know, if something was to happen, you wouldn't know the other guy's numbers. It, it might be something serious. That's a good tip. Thanks, Paul. Last thing, all the shirts on that table over there are free. If you need a shirt, go ahead and take those. We have our official club hat and beanies here, twenty dollars each. I can Black take credit beanies. card. Thanks and put people put them on their bell. Is there like any other spots you guys? Yeah. So, uh, so placement for knives. That's a great fucking question. You should have at minimum one dive. At minimum one knife, right? One knife is good on your belt. It's a great location on the front belt. You know. Um, but if you drop your belt, you're not going to have a knife. Another great secondary location or primary is up on your arm here. People are going to differ on this, okay? But 
knives. Frequent spots for knives, right? Inside of a leg, on one of your arms, and on your belt. More the merrier. Right? If you there's certain gear that are gonna restrict, you know, Ryan Huff in particular. Um, there was in that particular instance there he had a free dive recovery vest on. <laughs> so with with Ryan, Ryan had one on his arm, um, but he had a knife up here on his arm. But uh, the, the data shows that we, we think that his, his other arm was got tangled up. And so because it was on his arm and this arm was tangled up, he couldn't reach a knife with this hand. His buddy diver had the free dive recovery vest. And when he went to go pick Ryan up off the bottom, he deployed his, his FRV got him up near the surface and Ryan was tangled and couldn't get to the surface so his flotation uh, vest was pulling him up to the top, his buddy, was his buddy's vest was pulling his buddy to the top, his buddy was trying to hold, keep hold of Ryan and his vest was blocking his knife. So he had this big balloon on him blocking his knife so he himself couldn't get his knife and uh, the second dive partner that was there ended up coming up and taking that knife from underneath the vest to, to get it. Uh, so the most important thing is to have free access to your knife with two hands, just in case one hand somehow gets disabled. Um, and um, if, it, if you do decide to put it on your belt, I actually keep mine on my belt. If you get into um, a situation where you need to drop your belt in an emergency, the very first thing you need to remember to do is to pull that knife because you may need it once your belt is gone. What did he get tangled in? He was, he was lobster diving. So Ryan was lobster diving. And uh, yeah, I'll do the, the quick and dirty breakdown. Uh, he was lobster diving. Um, he was in South County. And he was using one of those uh, mutiny style dive bags where it's the uh, webbing that goes around your waist and you have the mesh bag and like a little bit of elastic when you get your bug, you shove it down in there, keep going along your way. Um, that, in my opinion, I stopped using that when Ryan died because it, there's multiple things that, in my personal opinion, I find that are wrong with that. First and foremost, you have to assume that a legal size bug is going to be one and a half, two pounds. You have a limit of bugs, uh, seven of them, you're talking about, what, ten and a half pounds minimum on top of probably, you know, most of us, I'm looking around, all of us are going to be in the 12 to 15 pounds of weight on our belt range. So now you put another ten and a half pounds on you, you are now negatively buoyant. Your wetsuit is not going to keep you buoyant in the water. So A, if you're not in an emergency situation, um, you're just have ten pounds extra on, you're going to be fighting that, burning up your oxygen, burning up your energy. Ryan was doing that. Ryan was fighting. He had a bag of, um, of what pe the people that there described as actually some bigger bugs too. So he had more than ten pounds. When he had his issue, when he blacked out underwater, when you weight yourself property, properly, when you black out, your wetsuit is going to bring you back up to the top of the water. So you have an opportunity, some opportunity, to keep yourself out of the water. He had so much weight that he sunk out to the bottom. Um, I guess I went one step ahead. The, the, the issue that he had is on top of lobstering, he had brought a gun with him and he was spear fishing at the same time of lobstering, which is also kind of a no-no. Pick and choose, either lobster or spear. He had his full set of bugs. He saw a big sheep head. He went down to shoot it. Uh, his shaft got lodged in a hole. Um, when he went to go up, his reel free spooled and now he had line all around him. The line got tangled in his dive bag. His gun got tangled in the line. Everything was just a total rat's nest. Um, especially, think about that lobster bag. They've got those holes in them. What do lobster have? A lot of really grabby legs. So the lobsters were tangled. They were grabbing hold of the shooting line. The lobsters, when you have a bag like that, will grab hold of anything that's near. They'll grab hold of kelp. They'll grab hold, they'll grab hold of anything. Um, so he couldn't get back up to the surface because it just so happened that the length of line that was between where at its tangle point and the end of the shaft kept him about two feet from below the surface of the water. So he made it 
all the way back up to two feet. Sat there fighting, and then we saw on his watch that he went back down. He never came back up from down until his dive partner came, uh, popped his FRV, and pulled him back up to the surface. Completely fucked. Well, not to the surface. Pulled him back up, and then he couldn't hit the surface. So, um, me, my personal opinion to all of you, and this differs from some of other other people that I know here. Um, keep the bugs off your waist. I carry a float. Um, we, if you look at our YouTube channel, we we have a description of how to set up that float. Um, you can watch that video. Uh, keep your bugs on the float. Um, That's OC Sparrows Productions on YouTube. Yeah, you'll see. You can see our videos there. Um, Subscribe, like. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything. Lobster related. Don't be shy. Wait, wait, wait. Casey. Casey. Give Mr. Your Nakamura. Spiel. Yeah. Give your spiel. This guy's awesome. <laughs> How's it going, guys? I met some of you tonight. I'm Casey Nakamura. I'm the resident underwater hockey coach of Woo! the FC Spiros. Yep. Um, currently, we got shut down, but we uh, just restarted back in Irvine doing non-contact practices. But if you don't know underwater hockey, uh, it's a sport, free diving sport played at the bottom of the pool, where we, we push a puck along the pool bottom using short sticks. It's an international sport played all over the world and is an excellent dive training opportunity. Um, Pre-COVID, we were playing in Costa Mesa at OCC and in Irvine. OCC is still shut down right now, but Irvine is operational and they're allowing us back in starting uh, this next Tuesday uh, for non-contact practices. So that's where we'll work. You know, we'll do a swim workout. Uh, we'll do fundamental skills of diving down, working with the stick, practicing maneuvers, uh, twisting your body around. You know, um, it's a great way to work, especially for lobster diving, work on how to how to approach a situation and how to get access to something. So if you think about, you know, you're looking in a crevice in a hole and you need to figure out how to flip your body around to be able to reach in a certain way and get the right angle. So you can apply those same techniques, method, uh, uh, the strategies, method, those methods when you're thinking about when playing a sport. And, and you can practice those skills um, uh, and then look to enhance your, your ability to comprehend what's going on and how to make those quick decisions uh, underwater while you're holding your breath. So uh, Tuesdays, 8 to 9 at Irvine Aquatic Center. Um, $4, drop in, come swim, dive train. We have the whole, uh, we have the smaller pool right now. It's like five feet deep, but we got all uh, 10 lanes of it. So you can come in and I uh, can give you setups. so you can practice some of the hockey stuff, but you can use it in your, you know, your time. I'm here to, I'll be there to help support, um, you know, teach you the game, teach you how to play, teach you some of the fundamentals, but you can take that to, you know, work on your dive training, get in the pool, work on that fin kicking technique, um, you know, have some fun underwater. What are the so. dates and times again? Yeah, right now we'll be going uh, every Tuesday, moving forward starting October 20th. So next Tuesday we're restarting uh, at, in Irvine. Um, and Tuesday's moving forward continuously. And Casey's on our OC, OC Spiros and Friends page. So if you just uh, do the search function, uh, underwater hockey, you're going to find a bunch of posts from Casey and you can contact him right there too if you have any additional. Yeah. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Yeah. 8 o'clock's the time. All right, sweet. What kind of gear do you bring? Speedo, number one. Speedo. <laughs> okay? I still, you know, still want to make those OC Spiro Speedo. <laughs> I think they'll be a good sell. Yeah. Uh, so, typically, uh, you know, we're in a shallower pool. Um, I don't I don't recommend your free diving fins. You know, obviously free diving uses long fins, your carbons. Do not recommend that. If you have smaller fins, maybe scuba fins, body surfing fins, uh, fins uh, like swimmer fins, that's what I would recommend. Um, and you can still practice technique, you know, you don't, you don't want to risk hitting your carbon against the pool bottom. Um, that's not, uh, not something I would, I would recommend, especially in a, in a shallow pool. Or somebody's face. Yeah. Or <laughs> somebody's face. Yeah. Uh, what else happened? Uh, at OCC, we play in a deeper pool, uh, up to, it goes down to 12 feet. Um, so you have plenty of room to be able to maneuver. Um, but as far as gear, uh, your mass and snorkel use the same thing. Um, Board shorts. Well, yeah, you can use board shorts. Speedo is preferable if you want to be more streamlined, or jammers is the kind of the alternative there. Speedo um, is better. <laughs> <laughs> so we play at night. It's a no tan right now. Um, but otherwise, the, the main hockey specific is a glove to protect your hand. Um, different than your lobster glove, we have custom specific gear for it, as well as uh, underwater hockey sticks, um, which are about a foot long, and I have plenty of extras that I, you can start with, righty or lefty. Um, yeah, I got talk to, to Casey and get your gear. Yeah. So. All right, cool. Any dive questions? 
see you guys moving forward. We're going to have more of these outdoor meetings uh, as COVID progresses. And uh, certainly after the election, when this all disappears, uh, we're going to be back at the pizza place, having pizza and beers with the rest of America. So uh, thank you. Enjoy. <laughs>